Um, so this talk is really like, it's more, I would like to share a use, uh, an issue that I have currently um, with some tools integration. And um, I would like to have feedback on that if it's just my issue or is it uh, something, um, or do, do we have a way to fix that? Um, because currently it's like a lot of work we are doing. Uh, and yeah, uh, I would like really to have feedback there. Uh, so the thing started from, so uh, some of you probably know, or most of you, uh, that I'm working on microbiome a lot lately, and especially on metagenomic assembly. Um, so the idea is uh, when we do metagenomic assembly, we take a sample of, I don't know, soil, gut, whatever, where there is some microorganisms inside. So we have the microorganisms in, in there. We do, there is a sequencing step. So where we, do, we sequence the DNA from the organisms. So the, you can think about the microorganisms, you can see the different colors um, in this uh, image. Um, I'm sorry if it's not really easy to read, I draw it uh, quite quick. So I hope it's still readable. And so you sequence and you get these small pieces of DNA from different organisms, but we still don't uh, have no idea uh, uh, to which organism that belongs. So one step we can do is either we try to classify these uh, sequences to identify the taxon. Another thing that um, is happening more and more is to do assembly. So we do use specific tools that are called metagenomic assemblies tool that try to come up with uh, longer sequences by combining these short sequences into longer into context. And um, when we do a metagenomic assembly, a, no, a next step that happens is usually uh, binding these uh, longer sequences because of this context still doesn't represent the full genome of an organism. So we need to somehow uh, make groups of these um, contexts to group them in a group that corresponds somehow to uh, a, a species, for example. So it, we bind them and we try to, count, to, to, to uh, cluster them in groups or, or, or bins. And this is called metagenome, metagenome ensemble genomes. Um, and for running this, for doing this uh, metagenomic assembly, there is two possible approaches that we can do. It's a, usually you can, for example, uh, if you want to learn more about the microorganisms and the sequences of microorganisms um, in a soil sample, uh, you do just don't take one sample, you take several samples, maybe at different timing to really have a representative representation of, of a good representation of, of the microbiome at this time and the different microorganisms that are in this soil. Um, or, and then you can compare to another soil, for example, in another location. And so you, you do a lot of, of sampling for that to get the data. And um, when you do the assembly, and especially in metagenomic assembly, you can use two approaches. You can use uh, what is called co-assembly, where you take all the samples, all the reads that you got from all the samples, you assemble them in run run. So you run that, you, you merge somehow all the reads together before running the assembly to get the context from all the samples in one, in one uh, box or in one outputs. But there is another approach that is becoming more and more used also. Uh, it's called individual assembly, where you, you assemble uh, in parallel the different samples. And, and then you, you process them in, the, uh, in parallel. You do the binding in parallel. You do different things in parallel. And at the end, when you do the clustering um, and you clean the, the, the beans that you got, then you combine the, the different samples together to identify uh, really the, the metagenomic assembled genomes. So that is the, the two approaches. Um, the only th the thing that we, we, we realized by uh, trying to do that on Galaxy is that we have several issues then, uh, for example, when you have multiple inputs, so these multiple samples as inputs, um, we need to explicitly add these two modes. So when you have a collections, by default, only the co-assembly uh, approaches is, is uh, implemented. So for example, um, when you look at metaspace that is used, by default, whatever the type of data that you have here, you see that uh, you have always a four loops on all 
the input that you have. So if you have a collection, for example, of, of data, by default, all the um, all the um, in the in the wrappers for metaspace for galaxy, then uh, by default there is a for loop that go through all the samples and add them uh, to the same command line. So by default, metaspace is run only once. So we need to add another. Um, um, we have to explicitly add. Okay, do which type of, of modes do you want to use? Do you want to use a co-assembly mode or individual modes to define to, to put that directly to put that in the common sections of the of the wrappers to say if you use the, the co-assembly, yes, you can do a for loops on, on that and making only one command for that, um, for all the samples together. If you do an individual assembly, then we need you you don't do a for loops, and by default, several jobs will be run. Um, for for each for each of the samples in the inputs there, so um, um, it's a bit yeah the the issue that uh, um, we had so we had to 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 do that and we have even trickier cases for example so um, in this case we had a quality control uh, so we have an assembly where we do. Um, uh, individual assembly, uh, then we have the context on the second rows, and then we do a quality control where we compare the context to the input samples. So how it should work when we do individual assembly, um, we should uh, be able to run the quality control on each of the samples individually, and that there is a match between, uh, even if we give two collections, where the inputs, uh, the, the samples inputs are um, the raw data are uh, first collection, the second collections, we should there, and then um, the QC is run for uh, several times, so the number of, of samples we have, and that match every sample uh, and each context to run the quality control. But um, with one tool, uh, with Quast, um, I was investigating the, the implementation, and I found out uh, something that is, was a bit more trickier, Freaky. So it's like if we have a paired collection as input for the samples, the collection that is given by uh, the assembly is not a paired collection, it's a simple collection because we have only one output from the assembly, for, uh, one config file, even if we have a, a paired collection as input. Uh, so when we have forward and reverse, then the output of the assembly is one config file. So it's, it's good. But then when we do the quality control and we give the samples paired collection as input um, and the context collection as in the other inputs for the quality control, um, there are a mix of, of uh, for loops and non for loops on some aspects. So that makes the thing that um, there are, yes, several jobs. So the number of sample of jobs that were run, but the commands, that uh, and how the comments looks like it's uh, it's all the context were put every time as inputs for the collections for the for the quality control, and so um, the sample one were compared to the context from all from all context outputs from all the samples, so the raw reads from uh, sample ones were compared to all context from all the samples, same for sample two for sample blah 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 etc. And um, when we do this quality control, what we do is we do a mapping. So there is a mapping of the reads, the raw reads on the context. And so it means that in this case, it's the mapping where there is um, mapped mapping of each of the, of the reads on each of the contexts every time. So it's a lot of, of computational resources that are, were lost when we do that because the because of the way we had to where the way it was defined in the in the command uh, sections of the of the wrappers and the, another case that i figure found out also in this also tool is when we have a forward and a reverse collections there were a mix of everything were concatenated in once to really give only one output for so not one report for each of the samples, but just everything aggregating in one report where everything were compared to. So it was a bit of mix. So um, 
what I wanted to share here is um, is just uh, currently uh, it can be quite tricky to identify the case when it happens. So these cases of of uh, reality is different than what we expected. Um, and we need then to modify all the XML, the, make, the XML of a lot of tools uh, to add this assembly mode to, to uh, say, okay. To, turn to Josh Redder. So we need to, sorry, I'm not sure if it was a question or not, but yeah, okay. Uh, so we need to modify the XMLs uh, of of these um, of these tools to add this assembly mode. Except if there is another solution that I would be really love to hear, um, then we need to remove the for loops in the individual assembly mode for in this XML. And there is still a lot of tools. So I already started. We already started to do that on several tools. But there is still a lot of tools that doesn't provide that. And I know that some. Um, we are, we have that some collaborators that tried to run that and got some issues. And for us, we are also would like to implement this uh, metagenomic assemble uh, genome building workflows. And we need to, to cover this aspect of individual assembly. So, can and I, there is. Uh, can I yeah. ask you a question? Yes, um, sure. So, just to understand uh, the, the thing, um, so you basically have a list. And your list gets merged into a single data set because it iterates over all the yeah. items. Is that what's happening? Yes. Okay, yes. so there is the apply rules tool that takes your collection and places each data set into its own collection with a single item. Would that work? But it means you you add a, another steps. Do you mean in the XML wrappers or do you, or you need to oh, add I mean another workflow? Yeah, but the idea is why not? Uh, I'm not sure if it will solve. So it's it's not. But then the users need to know that they need to do that before. So which not is not. Um, so your users are running tools. Are running what? Your users are running tools, not workflows. So. These cases is a lot, so it's tools that we already have. So Mega, Mega It, Metaspace, Quast, CheckM, CoverM. Um, so, and there is a lot of other tools in these cases, um, more and more also, um, where, yeah, I'm still not completely sure how to express that, to be honest. So it's just a way I want, just wanted to, to get feedback on that also there. Um, so, we have the way that we have collections in, in Galaxy, and every time you have a collection here, in this case, you do a for loops over the, the item. So like in, in Metaspace, the way it's implementing the command sections of Metaspace is this way. So by default, in these cases here, you see that um, all the items of the of the collections I put in the same command. Do you get that? And you just okay. want to have it operate on a single file of the collection. Yes. So that's the solution then. And like, you know, if people are not comfortable with the apply rules tool, uh, which is super generic, but maybe a bit hard to understand. I mean, it's pretty simple to do another tool that uh, just reshapes your collection. I mean, it doesn't consume extra data, doesn't consume extra uh, Compute. Um, it's just yeah. But does that a matter work, of for being example? familiar with Galaxy. I'm just not sure if if it will fit to old cases. So when when you have these cases like here, these things, will that work? Well, I so don't you understand have an input. the graph, so you have to walk me through Sorry. that. So on the top, you, so you have the, the raw data on the top. You do the assembly, you get uh, an in output, which is the context. So you have another collection. So you have a collection on the top, a collection on the outputs of assembly. Then you want to compare the uh, output of the assembly to the inputs of that you add to the assembly inputs. It's the quality control step here. And you want to that to be run one by one. 
So you want to have the S1 compared to S1, S1 context compared to S1 raw data. Okay. Um, and currently in some of the tools, uh, that is not the case. It's not what is happening because of yeah, these I mean, four loops. So that's exactly what my suggestion is about. Um, so, you know, when you have the for loop and you iterate over a simple list, um, yeah. you have to have a list. So what do you do if your list shouldn't be merged? You make a list of lists where the inner part is just one item. I mean, we do this a lot. So I mean, I mean I'm, I'm a little sad that you say you spend a lot of time adapting the XML, which is good. Um, I mean, it's certainly something a lot of tools have. They have a pooled mode and a single mode, where pooled means you know you iterate over the entire input. But is it some? Yeah, okay. So then I didn't know about that. We already we discussed a bit with Bjorn, and I think the the only solution we had at the time was putting these two modes. So I didn't know about. But the... Bjorn is not the Galaxy community, um, so I think that's no, a no, great no. question so to ask in it... one of the channels. This, uh, like, I mean, I've been yeah. giving this answer a few times, and I mean, of course, it's interesting okay. to know that this is still a problem. Uh, I guess the question is then how to communicate about this. Yeah, yeah, that would be good to know because, uh, but maybe I need to try that first, also to see if it's fitting really to the to the to the, my to the use cases here or not. So. But yeah, that was mostly what I, I wanted mostly to discuss with the community there. It's also because I didn't figure out, I didn't find a solution there and I had to rework on the tool. So it's good to have it, to know if there is a solution for that. And that would be really helpful there, definitely. So, so. Uh, Marius, is there like a tutorial you would recommend? Or, I mean, I guess um, it's, kind of hard to look at the tool XML and know if Galaxy should sort of say, hey, do you want to build a list of lists here? Um, is there a good example tool XML that has a help section that would explain that, that we could sort of say for tools that have this pooled versus single mode, you know, look at this example tool when you're sort of writing the wrappers? I mean, I don't think we should, I mean, um... You know, if this pooled mode is something you would use, I would just write the pool part. Uh, I don't think I would adjust the tool XML because it feels much more generic and simpler to write a light tool that does the for loop and then just have Galaxy pick out the right structure. I mean, the, the good thing about the other mode is that you would do it, like if you only have a single file, it's kind of easier. Galaxy doesn't offer the ability to sort of auto promote a file to a singleton list. But then you do need to have those two independent command line sections independent. Like, I mean, they're in the if statement, but like kind of disconnected. Yeah, which I mean, I guess I'm fine with. I, I, I guess more my question is. I mean, that's fair. I mean, I think that's a perspective and it's I, I trust you use use tools and I don't. I, I um. I guess maybe the question is about like examples that would have that we could like point people at for how to write tools with like a help section like uh, I don't know. I mean, you guys know how to write the tools, right? Because I think like the Planimo docs go into depth on this, right? No, but the tools don't have. Yeah, there's that, but there's the um, and I could, you know, I, I wrote that, so I understand that. But I mean, like the help section should have maybe a description of like, okay, if I have a single file, how do I use this? If I want to break it into batches, how do I do that? Like maybe just pointing that up at the applied rules tutorial or something. I guess we do have that tutorial, but it's not, it's not structured I mean, in this way. So if I was going to improve uh, tutorials, I would, um, Put a couple of like commonly used rules that you may want to use in the applied rules tool. Okay. Which isn't a direct link to you know the tool form. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like there's some disconnect there between. Um, I mean, we do say in the tool form that we are, I mean, we, we say something about this. I mean, it is clear that you're going to reduce the data set on the tool form. Um, it's just you got to know what that means. And like, if you don't want to reduce it, how to get around that, right? Like, I don't exactly. think that, that portion is there. Like, uh, this is going to reduce it all down. If you would want to consume it in batches, here's, you know, maybe that's a little link we could put in the tools. It feels very specific, but um, anytime you're reducing a collection completely, um, sort of add the option to have, have a little help hint that like, if you don't want to reduce the collection completely, here's, here's how to restructure your data potentially. Um, yeah, I mean, I wonder how we can do this so it is not confusing. Because I mean, it's it's not that common, I guess. Like, you know, when you build a workflow with uh, fifty tools, then not common becomes common. <laughs> but like for the average user, they probably don't have to worry about this. I guess that's. That's part of the problem here, that those tools have this as a very common problem. So the tool on its own, even if you don't use it in workflows. I mean, I'm not sure it's a problem really. Or, I mean, like, I mean, you know it's a problem because there's an entire meta genomics community that struggle with that. <laughs> I mean, I would say the question is why did that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, why, why did nobody ask the question? Or like, I do answer that question like three or four times a year. Um, well, Bjorn, maybe to flip it back on you then, like we've, I think Marius and I have put a lot of effort into the apply rules tool and the to training around that. I mean, you know, I never write documentation, but I, I understood this was complex. So I actually wrote documentation for a change. Like, is there, what's, what do you think the missing piece of documentation is? I think maybe Marius's point is that this is not a problem with the tool. It's a problem with how information is flowing through the ecosystem. Is there, do you have an idea for how to improve that? I mean, not really because it's it's a, I mean, we have two kind of different problems, I guess. We, we have the developer, I mean, the tool developer problem, right? I mean, I guess this we can improve with documentation, Ugh. maybe port one of these tools and, and um, reference that then as a, as a best practice, whatever implementation of this kind of use case. But then we have also the, the end user problem that consuming those tools and needs to use it. So these are two different kind of problems, I think. Um, and for the last one, I don't know. I mean, we, we, we need to link well, the the last one. rules tools more prominently in the tool form then. I yeah. guess, I don't know. And probably also have more training where this is used really, because currently I didn't, for, I think I didn't realize that could be used. So it's mean that there is probably no tutorial. So almost not that many tutorials that use that, or at least not the one I checked or I worked on. So we need to have more tutorials that uh, show application of that, maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a fair point. Um, it's it's on the eternal to-do list. Um, it should get done, I agree. Um, I don't know. Um, we could certainly also offer the option for that thing. So if you have a tool that consumes multiples of a data set, we could 
We could maybe add a hook where um, we just reshape the connection in a way that things do not get reduced. But I worry about the, I mean, it's easier than opening up the apply rules tool, but I worry that <clears throat> it's not, I mean, I worry about the extra button and you still got to understand what's happening there. So I have this open PR that I started that's like, um, it's all, I was, I was trying to make a little modal or something to, to have all the different collection operations with like pretty pictures um, and maybe just like a higher level view. And one could easily imagine like, um, you know, you know, one button, use the apply rules tool to, you know, bin, I don't, <clears throat> A single singletonize the list into a list of lists like um but then you know we probably wouldn't want to put that model on every tool form but maybe the tool xml could have a have a hook like if this is a tool like an assembly tool where we expect this is a common operation we could have a little flag that would would do that i mean so let me restate that i mean this isn't an assembly problem in any shape way or form like i don't know how many projects are doing this um and i think we don't know that in advance i we don't know how our users are going to compose what they're doing and so i don't think that it makes a lot of sense to include this in the tool xml I mean, I think if something consumes something else than a simple data input, it should be an option on the row with the buttons that switch between collection and multiple inputs. We, and you would be okay with that button? <laughs> I mean, I would find it handy, but... Okay. I am... Um, for that, I think we probably need to explore how people understand this, if they understand this. But, you know, I mean, we could certainly take users more by the hand and say, because for the most part, we know this, uh, we can say this tool produce, I mean, consumes a list of data set and produces a list of data sets. Um, you know, that, that sort of simple thing. I mean, we're not even showing what outputs the tool has, right? But in order to make that right choice, I think the first step would be actually to show what outputs the tool is producing. That's currently not visible at all in the tool form. And then I guess the next step would be to, uh, to say, okay, we're taking your list and we're creating a single output. At which point the user will say, oh, but that's not what I want. I want a list and I want a list out. And there is the like logical link where you would put such an option in, right? Well, yeah, that's a great point. So, so maybe before the tool success page at the bottom of the tool form, we describe the outputs and even maybe just having that there would sort of catch people a lot quicker and then we could sort of go from there. I think so. And I think it also ties in with the commonly requested feature of being able to name your outputs in the tool form. Yeah, that seems like a pretty natural, good place to go. Or could there be like a tab um, for in the form where there's one tab where you can kind of put in all the inputs, um, deal with all the parameters of the tool, and then maybe have a tab uh, where you can deal with the outputs, see what they will be, and then possibly name them if that's of interest. I mean, we have a great uh, UX working group that I think could explore those different options. But yeah, I think there's there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. Okay. 
Very nice. Does that sound like it'll kind of help get towards um, the needs for your yeah. tools? So yes, I will try. I will have a look definitely at the apply works before going further. And if I if it still doesn't solve my issue, maybe I, I mean I can I check with you, Marius. We can discuss again. I can try to explain again and see different use cases where it really doesn't solve the issue. That sounds good. I mean, I guess my other question is like naturally, where would you ask a question like this? Uh, and sort of what should be the place? But you have asked this question because I think like the most knowledge in this regard is in the IUC. Um, yeah, but, but it's, then, <laughs> it's then a difficult have... for me. It, I had difficulty to formulate the problem, to be honest. So already uh, identify how to formulate that. It's it's also making this presentation is a way to for me to be sure that also I understood the problems. But then how do you um, for users or for someone that cannot, uh, doesn't want to give a talk or something like this. How do you ask them to formulate uh, the chat is difficult, I figure, I, fi I, I found. So um, already we were, I was trying to explain to Christo the chat about that issue and, and it was really not easy. So, yeah, so I, I can't say I understood the chart, but I mean, it's a problem I've heard um, multiple times. Uh, I think if you're talking to an audience of Galaxy people, maybe a link to a history and saying, here, I ran this tool on that input data set. I got that output and that's not what I want. What do I need to do? Um, would be something we can easily answer. I mean, I guess ideally in an ideal world, this question would go to help.galaxyproject.org because there it's discoverable. It's just... Uh, yeah, a lot of questions there, and it's a bit intimidating. I, I think that part of the issue is that we don't have a visual language for collections. And so no, like if people saw a chart, like this is how this tool is going to consume it, and this is how they're going to produce it, and they could see like boxes and lines connecting them. I think that people would be a lot easier. I think it would be, I think it, I think maybe Bernice's whole presentation would be like, the boxes look like this and they need to look like this. Um, and we, we want, people wouldn't have to understand that like, there's like 10 terms that we use like reduction and consuming and list of, you know, like singletons. And like, we, we've used a bunch of very jargony computer science -y terminology here. And we, we, want, we want our users to know all of that, but you know, I don't think it's, necessarily realistic and it's a very visual application already so just like i don't know it's, it's something i, I mean at, at one point anton had some great little charts of the you know the what the collection tools were doing um but if we could put more of that in the ui i think it would really help yeah. i think even like the workflow editor people can talk you know i think it's a little bit more communicable because you you know you you can see ribbons or not and, and sure, even that could be vastly improved by like, you know, a lot of information is lost in those ribbons, but, um, you know, just ribbon or not is, is already a start. I mean, in a sense, um, the best uh, way we had to go about this, we, we've actually removed with the multi-history view because we had like these boxes where you could see your structure of the connection. Um, but I guess there's, of course, more involved in in um, sort of showing the transition between your input and your output. And presumably we could build a diagram for each tool run, right? Like we've got, I mean, there, are, there are gonna be a couple tools where we can't, but for the most part we can. And yeah, I think that might be like, step one is just how do we display the outputs? And then step two is, well, we could add the naming. And that, that should be a pretty short project. Maybe step three, though, is in like, how can we communicate that visually? And, and then I think, you know, a question like this could just be like, hey, I want this diagram to look a little different. What do I do? Yeah. But I mean, I mean, these are all great points. I guess my question was mostly uh, what avenue, like, I think maybe for users, it's not entirely clear where they can even ask that question. It's like, I mean, if they want to get an answer from me, 
I mean, I obviously should be looking at help, but realistically, I only do if somebody points me at it. Uh, I am, however, present on the IUC channel. Um, is that a channel we would want to point more people at? Um, I, as a newer member, I would just be um, curious or, um, you know, if Bernice wants to put together or work on a training video together with me for this case um, in the short term, that might be a nice short term answer while the long term response on the functionality and the feature set gets flushed out a little more. Uh, if there's anyone else who's interested or thinks the training video using the pride rules just to see if that will help solve uh, any of the the issue that Bernice is experiencing, you know, let me know. I mean, definitely working on trainings would be good anyway. So having more training for that and more use cases, that would be really useful and to show that to, how to solve that issues. But anyway, in the in the max, so mitogenic assemble workflow, genome, uh, yeah, whatever workflow, uh, I will put that. Uh, in the tutorials when we write the tutorials, but so a short, yeah, would be good. Yeah, if you want to work on that, I'm happy to help there. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Berenice, for sharing your uh, the issue that you run into, and um, hopefully we can kind of get you towards an answer. Um, I think maybe uh, putting together, we could put together like a blog post uh, or something like that, that can break down for folks where they can plug into the community if they kind of get stuck. Um, and maybe uh, this kind of training video will already help to address it. But um, I think also maybe like a blog post of uh, this kind of story of how you got stuck um, here and you know, the solution and maybe like pathways for other users um, so that this can be a little bit more discoverable. Might be also a good idea, um, but the tutorial may take care of that. So that might not be I mean, good. I just want to point out also for the new people that we've had videos in the beginning and there's a reason we don't do them anymore because they can't be updated uh, easily. And that's why we went with tutorials. And it's also much easier to find tutorials than videos. That's a good point. It's hard to scale some of this like transfer of knowledge where videos take a lot of time to produce and can be extremely helpful, but as soon as something changes, it might not work for you anymore. Uh, I hate videos. You know, if there's nothing written, I just, no, I will use something else. Um, personal opinion, but I mean, I think it's probably quite common that busy scientists will not take half an hour even five minutes to watch a video. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think... we, we we could add more FAQs, for example, in the in the GTN for that to solve that. So that where explain, okay, you are, here is your cases, here are and different solutions for the different cases. And then you can point to the FAQs because they, uh, yeah, the FAQs will have each own page. So then it's easy to but then we probably need to identify the different cases and different solution for that. Yeah, I mean, I think these, these FAQs are fantastic. Uh, we need more of these because they are to the point. Um, With um, Andrew, we use like um, an automatic rendering of Google Slides to video. Um, so that might be something we could explore here where um, the slide notes are um, kind of read kind of with the robot voice, but uh, that could be still helpful and then a little bit more updatable in a manageable way. It's already implemented in the GTA. Okay. So when we have slide, we have automatic videos generation. Yes. Okay. That's great then.
Um, I'm seeing some comments from Dan and in the chat um, kind of mentioning that it's okay for people to end up in the lobby anytime and that way they can um, ask their question, um, get an answer there or get pointed to the right channel that they need to be in. Um, and it's okay to ask any kind of question, even one that's not fully formed or um, is a little bit hard to communicate um, just as kind of a place to start the communication. Um, <laughs> And then I wonder if we can uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but I wonder if we could um, use one of those text generating AIs um, to steer people in the right direction. I don't know if that's too spammy. It sounds like that'd be fun. I mean they generate they generally even generate good-ish or workable templates for tools. Uh, so I wonder how usage questions would come out and <laughs> if we have uh, if we have the funds to pay it. I think that'd be a cool idea to explore. Were you going to say something, Michelle? Oh, I was going to say that um, Hopkins is having like a meeting about chat GPT or like a town hall or something. So I don't know how, I don't know what we'll be able to use, but it's an interesting question for sure. But from a policy standpoint, like, I don't know what they're going to do or say about how academics can or can't use that. Feels like a whole new world. Um, and then I'll also just um, read out uh, the last comment that Dan made is that we kind of have two problems. One is um, answering questions and uh, that people will have by providing documentation and materials. So I guess being a little bit proactive um, and then also encouraging folks to kind of just ask if it doesn't exist or they can't find it. And I think, you know, sometimes as someone's learning, uh, you don't know if it's something that you're missing or uh, and just can't find or if it doesn't uh, exist, which is totally a possibility. So um, I think uh, definitely this is a good, a good um I think this meeting has been helpful for us to kind of bring some of those up and we can kind of continue to brainstorm how we can encourage folks to um, ask those questions. Awesome. I hope this has been a helpful discussion for you, Veronice, and uh, for you all joining today. Any other questions or comments? Um, I, I, I had a quick comment. Um, I, 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 I apologize if I came off a little um, defensive in this meeting, but I, I really, and, and that, that's on me, and I, but I do really love this format of like, we've got a specific problem, here's a presentation. Um, I think this is really helpful. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I, so I just, I'd really like to encourage this more and I, I apologize if my like tone or, our, our, our comments like discouraged it because I think it's really great. So I just wanted to throw that in. Yeah. Thanks so much, Bernice. Completely agree. Thanks for, <laughs> but thanks for, for, I mean, I wanted, I feel a bit like stupid. I, I didn't know the apply. I mean, I didn't check the apply rules on that and I didn't try to see if it works or not. But on the other hand, I mean, it's helpful to have the discussion to also see if, if it's, I mean, if I didn't figure out about the apply rules, I mean, there is probably a lot of users that didn't figure out about the apply rules. So how can we solve these big issues of, of finding that and making that more obvious? So at least uh, <laughs> my feeling there uh, is good to help also building better Galaxy for that. So, and better interface or better materials for that. So all good. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Um, 
With that, we'll close our community call today. The next meeting that we'll have is on April 13th, and we'll get an update about Anvil. See you all in about a month, and many of you in Baltimore, hopefully. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.